Salam from the People's Dispatch Studios here in New Delhi. I'm Siddhant Ani and as always you're watching the Daily Debrief. We've been coming to you through the year and since it's the last week of 2022, we decided it's a good time to wind up or round up maybe some of the top stories from some of the important sectors uh, that have been affecting uh, the world in the year gone by or the year that is coming to a close in fact. And we're starting things off. Uh, by looking at, tech, at the technology industry, the technology space, uh, particularly big tech, which has suffered a massive uh, reduction in market capitalization uh, compared to a stellar 2021. It's of course had a wide impact on a range of people working in the tech industry as well as allied sectors across the world. Uh, we've seen a deepening of the rift between the United States and China, two of the biggest economies in the world and the leaders in both manufacturing as well as higher technology. Uh, joining us for this special episode of Daily Debrief will be our resident tech guru, Bapa Sena. Bapa, good to have you uh, in the studio with us for perhaps the final time, at least this year. Um, it's been a dramatic year, at least from the perspective of those telling the stories of what's been happening in the tech industry, all kinds of uh, action. Uh, collapses, uh, buyouts, takeovers, and, and overall big tech uh, kind of taking a beating after the highs of, of the previous year and all of that. Uh, we'll talk to you uh, over the course of this episode about some of the biggest stories, of course, uh, in the tech industry. Uh, starting off with wherever actually you want uh, as, as uh, maybe the biggest of the big. Right. Um I think we should start off with what you said, right? 2021 was the high-flying year, right, for tech stocks and for crypto. I mean, and people were making all kinds of wild project projections. There were projections of crypto going to one million dollars, uh, Bitcoin going to one million dollars, and the tech stocks just going to the moon. And you had. Uh, even minor tech stocks, right? The so-called meme stocks, which mm. were like just skyrocketing. And from that to uh, just within a span of one year where we are in the depths, right? And uh, kind of this entire space has collapsed. Um, in terms of market uh, valuations, right? Um, it's not that, that the tech industry has uh, like, right. Um, come to an end, but their market capitalizations have taken severe beatings. So I think to start off with, we start off with the the craziest of them all, which is crypto, mm. uh, which um, last year uh, we we heard about all these marvelous things that are going to happen, how money is going to be uh, reborn and um, NFTs, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and you go on and on and on. And even cryptos which are launched as uh, a joke. At the peak, uh, the entire crypto space was valued at $3 trillion. Right. And now it is less than like um, $800 billion. So it, it's lost about $2.2 trillion. Mm. Um, it started... Um, uh, the, the first big collapse in the crypto space happens, I think, in the March-April time frame when um, uh, uh, two coins, uh, which, are, which are linked, right, uh, Luna and Terra, mm -hmm. they collapsed and, and with them evaporated about $50 billion. Um, and at that time, it was thought of an isolated thing, a, a problem with Terra and, and uh, Luna. Uh, Luna, which and, and they had this, it was a... It was a stable coin, as in uh, Terra was a stable coin. The spec to the dollar and the peg broke. And uh, it was kind of thought to be this problem of this one group. Mm. But then we saw this cascading bankruptcies, right? So after that, you had uh, a company called Three Arrows, uh, which went down, and then, and then Voyager and uh, Celsius, all these, um, all these groups effectively going down. And because they were highly, uh, they had taken these highly leveraged positions, mm. Uh, and were impacted when uh, when uh, Terra went down, right? Uh, <clears throat> then from there, we uh, we kind of waited for another six months, and then we had the biggest crash of them all in FTX and and Sam Bankman Fried and his two companies, FTA, uh, the the FTX Exchange and the Alameda Research, and both of them spectacularly collapsed, right, um, within a matter of days, and. Um, now there are there are these rumors circling, uh, circulating around the other big 
FTX um, uh, um, competitor, the, the another big crypto uh, exchange, yeah. which is Binance. And I think with this, we kind of are finally beginning to see the the full um, thing of what crypto was, right? Instead of being this future of money, it was basically Ponzi schemes and outright fraud, uh, and and just just people making highly leveraged bets by borrowing from each other, by defrauding customers and using customer money to make wild bets. Mm. And um, why, when it was going up, it went up spectacularly. And when it's collapsing, it's collapsing spectacularly. Uh, and at the end of the day, there is really nothing to back it up, right? Mm. I mean, there is no inherent value. There is no yeah. uh, real business. There is no... Um, cash flow which backs up this entire space and and you have this money effectively evaporating mm. um, that's kind of probably the biggest one of them then the, then there were all these other the so-called meme stocks like stocks like robin hood and uh, peloton and uh, zoom which uh, which just shot up like uh, to ridiculous valuations yeah. right and some of them actually have valid business like zoom, zoom. we all use zoom right mm -hmm. it just didn't deserve the kind of valuations which it got and now they've lost like 80 90 percent of their valuation uh now if you move from there to the the big tech right these are like comp these are huge companies all trillion dollar companies at one point and they are solid businesses. They have been around for more than 10 years mm. and they generate huge amounts of cash. But their valuations had gone up so much and now they are falling back. And, and, and I mean, it's spectacular what is happening to each one of them, right? Amazon has become the first company to lose a trillion dollars in market cap. And if you think about it, Amazon's business is probably the, the most... Uh, stable of them all, right? Amazon is not in one business. Yeah. It is in three major businesses. Um, one is it's obviously retail business it's where it's where it's in a dominant position mm. worldwide. Uh, then the it's cloud business, which is also it's in a dominant position. And increasingly it has been in the advertising business, mm. right? Because people, as since you're selling your goods on Amazon platform, you yeah. also would advertise, advertise there naturally. Mm -hmm. And that's becoming a big part of Amazon's business. And these are big businesses. They're not going to go away, mm -hmm. but it's, market, it's lost a trillion dollars in market cap. Uh, you have companies like, uh, similar to Amazon, Google has lost um, like close to more than $800 billion. Apple has lost uh, $800 billion. And these are all like big companies which are not going anywhere, yeah. which are here yeah. to stay. Uh, things which are slightly different are uh, Facebook, Meta, which has lost 75% of its market cap. It's lost like, I think, about 700 plus, 700, 750 billion dollars, right? Hard to keep track nowadays. Uh, Facebook is, I think, not in the same league as, as other companies, right? Facebook is a one-track pony mm. of advertising, advertising on yeah. Facebook. Now, the Facebook platform itself is... Uh, is not going to grow, right? I mean, in fact, people are, it's a platform which was probably I doomed. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably on its way down, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, Instagram and WhatsApp are um, still going to be very valuable, but Facebook itself is probably uh, on the way down. Mm. And so uh, clearly Zuckerberg sees that, and that's why there was this such a hype about uh, changing its name to Meta and, and hyping Metaverse, mm. which till now has gone nowhere, right? So, I mean, in, in case of Facebook, you can understand that it's, it's, it's in a tricky position. The other big, big name, right, in, in these big tech companies is Tesla. Uh, now, Elon Musk has been in the news because more for Twitter, right? Yeah. And taking over of Twitter, like making a hostile bid, which was initially rejected, then accepted, then Elon wanted to back out and was kind of forced by the courts to finally go through with a $44 billion um, takeover. takeover. And then all the controversies, right, about, about uh, the Twitter files and, and the Hunter Biden story. And um, probably there is much more to that, right? I mean, the, the, the media is playing up the Hunter Biden story, <clears> but um, there is uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, Twitter did actually suppress um, many more, probably far more impactful uh, news 
sources and news stories mm. and they were they were in cahoots with the um, us uh, intelligence agencies yeah. to to suppress these stories especially in the in the middle east especially uh, things which were uh, which were anti war and against the us mm. foreign policy um, but the other side of musk which is tesla from where he funded this acquisition yeah. of um, twitter that tesla's market cap has gone down by Seventy uh, percent, right? I mean, last year, Tes like Tesla was going to the moon. Tesla was going to four thousand dollars a share, and now Tesla is um, down in the dumps, right? And uh, what has happened is Tesla is starting to be treated like a traditional automaker, mm. right? <clears throat> Earlier, Tesla was selling a fantasy, mm. and they were priced based on that fantasy. Mm. Uh, and even now, it's very highly valued for a successful automaker. Mm. Uh, but it's started, starting to be treated like that. And Tesla is now starting to face serious competition. Uh, and the competition is all over the world, right? There's serious competition from the Chinese. Mm. Um, even American companies like Ford are now coming up with EV vehicles. Um, the Koreans, Hyundai and okay. Kia, are coming yeah. up with serious competition, and the Europeans, right? Uh, um, uh, Audi and Mercedes have EV vehicles out. Mm. So uh, Tesla is no longer kind of the sole player in this EV space. Um, so, and naturally now they're going to become, their valuations are going to be compared with other automakers. And uh, then that, even the valuation which is there today, which is, after they have dropped 70% is not justifiable if you compare it with the valuations of other automakers. So right. I think uh, that kind of is a broad sweep, right? What we are seeing is uh, the, the, the really speculative plays, yeah. they are probably wipe, getting wiped out and never to return, mm. um, which is good because, I mean, these were, I mean, basically just outright fraud. Yeah. Uh, but even the companies which have solid businesses and solid cash, cash flows, their valuations are seeing serious cuts um, as, as the market kind of uh, adjusts Adjust. to reality, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. One of the impacts, uh, before we obviously move on to a couple of other subjects, uh, ha would be on small investors, those who buy into uh, some of the, you know, the, the skyrocketing uh, valuations and, and projections and uh, often, uh, you know, projections that come that are sponsored by the company that is who, whose uh, future is being told. Uh, but apart from that, the brunt of of this has been felt by tens of thousands of tech workers across uh, many of these companies. How do you see uh, the industry recovering from that? And, and those involved in tech, uh, how do you see, what do you see? See, I think the projections are actually bleak for, for tech workers, right? I mean, uh, see, what happened was immediately after the, the pandemic um, and when the stimulus money was put in and all these companies started, uh, their stocks started going skyrocketing because they said that, okay, now the physical world is going to come to an end and we are going to always be in this virtual world and, in, and go to work and... Uh, party everything, everything in the virtual world <laughs> and so so then these tech companies started hiring like crazy right and the the first wave of tech layoffs which we have seen this year that is kind of getting back to normal levels mm. right mm. we still haven't seen deep cuts mm. they are probably going to come next year right, right. Uh, as as the valuations of even the profitable tech companies have taken severe beatings mm. it's natural that we are going to see deep cuts. So, so I think the the real pain in the tech sector is probably still to be felt, and and I think and next year we are going to see that. All right. Uh, the other big topic that has been also in play through the year has been uh, the the so called it's not really a war. It seems more like a, a unilateral provocation. But but the the challenge that China is is presenting to. Uh, the U.S.'s traditional hegemony over tech and, and you know, research and development and, and this space uh, and, and what the reaction has been to that. So, um, I don't know, maybe we can start there or we can go into a little bit about the challenges that uh, perhaps big tech has been facing from also courts and other regulatory bodies. So, so let, let's do, do the, the China story first, right? Which is the, the really the tech war story. In some ways, it's probably an even bigger story than the, the severe thrashing which the tech stocks have taken because we have seen these ups and downs like in the dot-com era. Mm. Uh, we had seen these huge uh, rise in tech stocks and then their collapse. 
uh, and we're seeing it again, right? But in what is happening in relationship to China and, and the sanctions on, on the Chinese um, semiconductor space, that has far-reaching impact, right? I mean, for the last 30, 40 years, we have seen this increasing globalization and uh, integration of supply chains. And now we are starting to see that a de like this beginnings of deglobalization and, and fragmentation of the supply chain. And, and it's kind of driven by the American angst at the rise of China, right? And kind of the American hegemony on, on uh, industry and, and, and in, in, its economic power is driven from this, this uh, being the tech leader. And mm. now that, is, that it is getting seriously challenged, um, America thinks that the way to kind of uh, control that is by trying to stop China from growing. And, and that's what the tech sanctions are really uh, targeted at. And mm. they announced the first batch of sanctions in two, uh, last year. But this year, um, they have announced far more restrictive sanctions, right? It pretty much covers um, export of any high-end chips to China and uh, uh, chip-making equipment, right? So uh, last year they had, for example, um, among the chip-making equipment, the, the kind of the, the most prominent uh, chip yes. maker is ASML, right? Um, which makes these... Um, these the, the 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 most advanced chips the, the the seven nanometer and the five nanometer and the three nanometer chips are used are made using ASML machines and so the, the most advanced of ASML machines is called what is the uses what is called the EUV technology and that they had banned last year right the, the and the uh, that was easier for US to ban because that uses American technology right um, so so the their uh, so because ASML kind of licenses the American, the, the, the key UV technology from American companies, mm. uh, America basically said that you can't use our technology, right. and so they could ban it. The second wave of sanctions that have come, they are now asking ASML to not just stop, not just not sell UV, but not sell even the previous generation machines, which are called the DUV machines, right? Mm. Uh, and... Um, that has severe impact for China, but it also has severe impact for for companies like ASML, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, a, like 30% of AMS, ASML sales are to China, China, and so ASML is now kind of resisting that, right? Saying that um, like DUV doesn't have American technology, right? So they should be able to sell DUV machines, and mm -hmm. and they kind of resist. And, and we are seeing this um, from all American allies, right? So the American allies are not willing to. Uh, go, along. go along with it because it it represents significant setback to their revenues because China consumes like between thirty to forty percent of the global uh, semiconductor chips which are produced in the world, right. right? And so, if you stop these companies from selling to China, you are immediately seeing a cut of revenues of thirty forty percent, yeah. which is which will have huge impact on the on all of these companies, and and so you are seeing. Uh, uh, Mm, Taiwanese, Korean, Japanese, um, uh, the Dutch, um, all these uh, countries really dragging their foot on going along with the next generation of uh, these sanctions from, from the US. Mm. And even the American semiconductor companies like NVIDIA and Intel, they are um, uh, like raising a ruckus at this because this is, uh, this effectively, uh, if carried out in full, this would mean kind of the world's the, the the tech world splitting into this two separate uh, zones, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which which don't uh, which, which don't mix with each other, which don't like share, share knowledge, and it would be a huge uh, setback for the tech industry and for the for the global economy as a whole. So mm -hmm. so we will see and how it progresses. And so that is the direction in which you you see things proceeding, uh, at least from uh, from whatever evidence we have so far. So, see, clearly, America, uh, U.S. wants to push that, right? Now, whether they will be successful in doing that, that remains to be seen because the, 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 their allies, like I said, mm -hmm. are dragging their foot, right? And even you, American companies are, are not happy with this. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're, uh, one of the uh, fairly logical counter-arguments is that if you <clears throat> stop doing this, you are effectively uh, depriving these companies of 30 to 40% of their revenues. Mm. 
and and this being such a fast moving space you need to constantly be innovating and right. and putting and um, investing in research and development and if you if you then take like 30% 40% of their revenues away yeah. then that is that much less investments you can put in future research mm. while um, what will force china to do is it will force china to turn self sufficient and china yeah. the chinese government has recognized this and they are they have this um, this uh, um, uh, the uh, like making uh, china kind of initiative right. where they are hoping to be uh, by 2025 uh, they 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 are hoping to be like forty percent self sufficient, and by a future date, by twenty thirty, I think it's like seventy percent self sufficient. And so these kind of sanctions will only accelerate China's self sufficiency, right? Mm. So in the long run, it's going to come back to bite the U.S., right? Um, so uh, it remains to be seen how much they will push it and how much um, uh, they will back off. But um, we are in a precarious situation. All right. Uh, we'll we'll call it a, a, a wrap on that note, Baba. Good to have you uh, through this year talking tech with us on Daily Debrief. Right, we hope you enjoyed the first of our year-ending special episodes on Daily Debrief. We'll be back tomorrow talking about the energy sector and how various global crises have impacted how we consume, what we consume, at what price we consume it. And of course, looking also at the future of the uh, energy sector in the context of human-induced climate change. Uh, until then, of course, we invite you, as always, to head to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, for details on these stories as well as all of the other work we do. And, of course, don't forget to follow us on the social media platform of your choice. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.